In this lecture, we are going to discuss volume loading hypertension. Initially, we are going to define the volume loading hypertension, what basically is volume loading hypertension, and then we are going to explain it with an experiment and few graphs. So let's start. Basically, volume loading hypertension is hypertension caused by the excess accumulation of extracellular fluid. Hypertension is basically the increased arterial pressure. The normal uh, level of arterial pressure is around 90 millimeter of mercury and when the mean arterial pressure or the blood pressure basically remains above their uh, upper level of normal then it is considered as hypertension. Now hypertension could be uh, due to the uh, accumulation of salt, it could be due to the volume, uh, accumulation of extra volume or it could be due to defects in the excretion of the uh, fluid volume. Now we have discussed uh, one thing again and again that the arterial pressure, that the arterial pressure has a two basic determinant. The arterial pressure has two basic determinants. One is basically the intake of salt and water which is being shown here in this graph and the other is the renal function curve or the excretion of the uh, fluid with the help of kidneys. So the point at which the point at which the excretion of the fluid or the excretion of the uh, extra water is equal to the intake of salt and water at that point which is known as the equilibrium point that is basically the normal level of arterial pressure which is around 100 millimeter of mercury in normal humans. To explain the volume loading hypertension we will take an example of a dog, an experimental dog. Now we have basically to increase the intake of salt in water in the dog and prove that due to the accumulation of excess, due to accumulation of excess fluid, we can basically raise or increase the arterial pressure or we can uh, cause the hypertension. And that will be basically the volume loading hypertension. Now suppose for example, we have a dog from which 70% of the kidneys are removed. Initially, initially 30 to 35-45% to of the left kidney is removed. Initially 35 to 45% of the left kidney is removed and then the entire right kidney is removed. In this graph, we are showing the mean arterial pressure over here and the number of days are here. So initially, in few days, before 20 days, 35 to 45% of uh, kidney, left kidney was removed and then the entire right kidney was removed. But uh, the ultimate result was removal of around 70% of the kidneys. And the purpose of this removal of the kidneys was basically to, to bring some changes in the renal function curve or to bring some changes in the functions of the kidneys or the renal functions. When basically kidneys are important in the regulation of arterial pressure, that is our main topic. The role of kidney in long term regulation of arterial pressure. So that's why we are basically discussing different uh, topics related to the role of kidney in regulation of arterial pressure. Now, as 70% of the kidneys are removed, this curve, the renal function curve is disturbed. What happens after removal of 70% of, 70 of the kidneys from the dog, the arterial pressure, the mean arterial pressure, which is being shown here, it slightly increases it slightly increases and this equilibrium point, this equilibrium point which was initially at 100 millimeter of mercury at this point, it shifts, it shifts slightly towards this point and it becomes 106 millimeter of mercury. At this very point, at this very point, the 
intake of salt and water has not been changed but the the functions of the kidneys are being changed or manipulated by removing the kidneys so that the kidney cannot properly excrete the excess water or the fluid so when this function of the kidney is manipulated and the renal functions are disturbed it leads to a slight increase in the arterial pressure from the normal of 100 mm of mercury to 106 mm of mercury these are basically same graphs which are basically showing the intake and output on the y axis and arterial pressure on the uh, x axis now this dog is basically uh, now given 0.9% saline or uh, the dogs are basically given uh, water in which there is salt which is basically 0.9% saline now is the water which contains more salt it uh, basically cannot quench the thirst because uh, salt cannot be easily removed from the body and on top of that the kidneys are also uh, not functioning properly because 70% of the kidneys have been removed so salt is being loaded in the body of the dogs salt is being loaded in the body of dogs and which leads to accumulation of excess fluid now this accumulation of excess fluid leads to increase in the arterial pressure it leads to increase in the arterial pressure from this 106 from this 106 level up to 130 or 140 and it shows that if the renal intake uh, sorry if the intake of salt and water is increased if the intake of salt and water is increased the arterial pressure can increase from the normal level now this thing is being shown shown on this graph initially only the kidneys were removed so it moved the arterial pressure from 100 to 106 mm of mercury now not only the kidneys are removed but the dog is being given saline water or water with salt now it has led to accumulation of salt and water in the body or it has increased the intake it has in increased the intake so the intake has increased up to four times because when the dogs are given salt salty water or saline they drink more water because uh, when uh, someone any mammal human or animal when they drink normal water tap water they uh, drink normally in normal quantity and normal amount but when salt is added in their water then the amount of fluid intake increases so here we see that when salt water or saline is given the art the intake is increased four times from this 1x to 4x here and this 4x increase in the fluid intake the intake of salt and water has led to increase in the arterial pressure from 100 mm of mercury to 150 mm of mercury it has basically led to increase in the arterial pressure so this is basically a volume loading hypertension now the dogs are now given tap water instead of saline water the dogs are now given tap water instead of saline water so in a matter of few days in a matter of few days the arterial pressure falls again to that level now the arterial pressure has fallen back to this level this is slightly above the normal level normal is around 100 mm of mercury 100 mm of mercury this is around 106 mm of mercury it is because of removal of the kidneys because we have two determinants two important determinants one is the renal functions and the other is the intake of salt and water so initially we only manipulated the renal functions then uh, we loaded the dogs with the salt water and now again we are given uh, we are giving the dogs tap water which is normal water which is not containing salt so it leads to decrease in the arterial pressure and after few days when the the arterial pressure has uh, remained 
at the normal level or a slightly uh, elevated level the dogs are given salt water once again they are given salt water once again this time the, the dogs drink even more water because uh, initially when they were uh, taking the saline water or water with salt they were not drinking uh, uh, so much but now this time they have uh, become used to this saline water so they are drinking even more so it has led to a more increase in the arterial pressure even more even more than the previous top previous top was here now this new top is here and here so it has even increased up to 140 or 150 mm of mercury so we can show we can see that it has increased more now it shows that when the when the kidneys are removed the arterial pressure slightly increased due to uh, due to the uh, disturbance of the renal functions because the volume of water cannot be removed from the body it leads to slight excess accumulation but when in when a saline water increase intake of salt and water is given the intake is increased up to four times then there is a tremendous increase in the arterial pressure when the saline water is removed and tap water is given then the arterial pressure falls back to this level it falls back to this level when again the saline is given or salt water is given the arterial pressure elevates again to this high level and this time it goes uh, uh, very easily so it this this uh, experiment or in these graphs are basically demonstrating the effect of volume loading hypertension and they are basically trying to prove that when the accumulation of salt and water is increased from one time up to a uh, four or five times then the when the, due to the intake when the intake of salt and water is increased and the renal functions are not a uh, proper uh, like the kidneys are not functioning properly there is accumulation of excess fluid in the body and it leads to hypertension and this type of hypertension is known as volume loading hypertension so that's all about volume loading hypertension which is basically hypertension caused by excess accumulation of extra cellular fluid and that excess accumulation can be uh, due to uh, disturbance in the functions of the kidneys or disturbance in the renal function curve or it could be due to increase in the intake of salt and water thanks a lot for watching the video